we feel like there's a tiny, tiny sliver of people who are basically sane, and we're surrounded by a regime and a media that has completely lost their minds. on the most absurd, transparent pretext, kill maybe a million people, displace four million people, and this is mainstream. That's a mainstream position. No one has ever been called an extremist for saying, yeah, let's go ahead and kill all those people for no good reason. That's not extreme. You know what's extreme? Extreme is saying maybe we shouldn't do that. <laughs> But out there, it's all the insanity. You can starve 500,000 children with your sanctions policy in Iraq. No one was ever called an extremist for that, right? Who was ever called an extremist for supporting that policy? Or even, as government officials said, defending it and saying the price was worth it. No one was called an extremist for that, but you know what you were called an extremist for? For saying maybe we shouldn't do that. But here's my favorite example. Not the last debate, two debates ago. Rick Santoro. Remember Rick Santoro? Google Santoro. I should not tell people names. I should not tell people names. But I reflect my... I sometimes call him Quiz Bowl Santoro because of his knowledge level. Uh, I knew that ironically, of course. But Santoro and Ron Paul had this exchange on the subject of Iran. And Santorum says, oh, you know, they hated us since 1979. And you notice that they have hated us for no apparent reason. Just one day they woke up and said, man, we hate those people. There's no reason for it. We're just irrational. So Ron Paul says, wait a minute, hello, I think it goes back to 1953 when the CIA helped overthrow their government. And that might have a teensy, weensy thing to do. Now, if they simply liberated Iran from this government, that would be one thing. But they replaced it with the Shah, who was not a good guy. I mean, if I were to describe to you the forms of torture he used on political opponents, you would not be able to eat for a week. And yet, so Ron Paul says this, and says, you know, maybe that has a teensy, weensy bit to do with why the U.S. isn't white right over there. And Santorum responds by saying, I'm not going to apologize for spreading freedom around the world. <laughs> Ron Paul is Waldo the same. What does that statement even mean? Apparently it means that when the U.S. government installs a dictator in your country, you better like it. Because by definition, that's real. What kind of a world is this? And this just goes on the world. Yeah! Now, let me make a little confession here. Let me make a confession here. Now, the state has a hold over our minds. It has a hold over the left, and it has a hold over the right. The left thinks that if it weren't for our wise overlords, we'd all be dead in the ditch, and earning three cents an hour, and eating poison food, and all our consumer products would be exploding in our faces. And the right thinks, well, if it weren't for the regime, well, then we'd all be speaking Arabic, and all the rest, right? We all know that. It's all about something that the state they think they can get the state to promise it. But what in fact has been going on is that the state has us thinking that it is us. You know this thing you hear on TV? Should we invade Iran? Or should we starve them? How dare they say we? It's them! and dehumanizes the them. Because it makes us think that war is like a big video game that I can watch on my TV. And isn't it cool to see all the US flags all over the foreign country showing how the occupation is perceived? This is deep 
completely dehumanizing and evil, and it's so easy to get caught up in. Americans accept propaganda from their government that if it came from the Soviet Union, they would have laughed at it. But it comes from the Pentagon, and they get down and worship it. They, they go around looking for ways to defend the propaganda. It's very easy to fall into this. And in fact, have you noticed how the neocons think it's perfectly okay for us not to like Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden and Barack Obama? But, heaven, but heaven forfend that the Iranians don't like Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden or Barack Obama. How dare they? This is America. How dare you not like this? I have a funny feeling that the Iranians have just as good a reason not to like Hillary Clinton as we do. <laughs> now the confession I have to make is that for a long time, I too went along with this. The first time, I mean, I'm so embarrassed to tell you guys this. I guess the, uh, the alcohol is starting to have its effect. But the first conversation I ever had with my college roommate was to tell him how much we needed to go get Saddam in 1991. This is so important, we gotta go get this guy. He's threatening the world, this guy whose military budget is one quarter of one percent of the U.S. military budget. What a dangerous threat to us all. I mean, he's deposing the Emir of Kuwait, for heaven's sake. And I went for the whole thing until one day I realized I can't do this anymore. Because I, I was hearing these news reports about retreating Iraqi troops being burned alive, 100,000 of them, and then in the U.S. they're having a Bob Hope special to celebrate this. And I thought, even though I supported this war, a lot of orphans and widows have just been created. How can I celebrate this? How can I celebrate this? So I started to And you notice that what if 100,000 people in Iraq had died because of an earthquake or, or whatever, some kind of natural disaster? Well, then people would send money, and we'd have telephones, we'd never hear the end of it, it'd be great. But if they die in a war, no one cares. They're just human garbage. They're thinking, because that's them, it's not me, it's them. But them and we belong to the same people. That is the human freaking race here. Now the one man in public life who has escaped the asylum won't go the same himself is of course Ron Paul. Now let's suppose let's suppose Ron Paul gets elected. Now some people say if he gets elected, if he gets elected, he won't be able to accomplish anything. I totally disagree. Number one, he would simply pardon a huge number of people. <laughs> number two, by executive order, he could repeal all the bad executive orders. <laughs> and number three, and this is for even if he could accomplish nothing else, imagine four years of somebody who tells the truth about foreign policy to the American people. I don't care if he accomplishes nothing else, but if he something other than this miserable third grade excuse for an argument, that they hate us because we're just so sweet and wonderful, and we march against breast cancer, and we have barbecues, and we play Batman. Wouldn't that be great? But now the other argument is, if he gets elected, won't he get blamed? for the big economic collapse. Now I grant you that is a concern, that's a real argument. But I think something that offsets that is that again, for four years, the guy can teach Austrian economics and highlight books and professors people ought to listen to and read. That's pretty good. Yeah. All right, now three years ago, three years ago this month, there was a fantastic event in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Yes. The Rally of the Republic that Ron Paul held. So Ron Paul refuses to endorse John McCain. So 
Illinois will not give him a speaking slot at the Republican convention, so he holds his own convention. And he comes up. Wow. And at that event, now, first of all, how the heck did that event take place? All of the tour space had been taken out and reserved for months because of the Republican convention. All the rental cars are taken, everything. How did 10,000 of the person get spent there? Because every one of us, well, mostly, I can't believe how creative all you guys are, by the way. Some of you people have talents that if I had five lifetimes, I couldn't do some of the things you guys do. But we figured it out and we made it happen. And at that event, Lou Rockwell comes out and mentions the name Murray Rockwell. Yeah. Oh, my God. 